Hello everyone and welcome to the first match we'll be covering from the Chessable Masters Division 1 winners, uh, winner bracket, uh, uh, it's Vladislav Artemiev versus Magnus Carlsen and this is the Armageddon game. Uh, the first four games they played, which are of rapid time format, 15 minutes per player and 3 seconds increment, uh, uh, every player won with the white pieces, which also means that every, uh, sorry, every player won with the black pieces, which also means every player lost with the white pieces. Uh, and the first uh, Artemiev took the win, then Magnus retaliated, then Artemiev won uh, game 3, and the Magnus Magnus again equalized in game four and this is now uh, game five and uh, here they don't just okay they play Armageddon but it's not um, uh, you know uh, the time format is not set in stone they have to bid for their time so you start with 15 minutes but you can offer to start with less which is I think it's it's an incredibly uh, efficient system and, and really awesome uh, you know, you, you get to see how low is someone willing to go to get the black pieces because everyone wants to play with black because you only need a draw to win the match. So uh, Magnus bid 7 minutes and 58 seconds. It's uh, much, much less than, for example, Hikaru. Hikaru, I, I think, bid 9 minutes and something and uh, in the other uh, Armageddon's also 9 minutes and something was bid. But Magnus go went as low as 7 minutes and 58 seconds. That's almost half the time that you start with, as you, you should start with 15 uh, minutes. So he did get the black pieces, but he uh, now has uh, very little time on the clock. So can he just uh, force a draw? Okay, maybe he can also win, but uh, uh, what he cannot allow is for Artemiev to win, because if he does, he wins the match. It's not all lost if you lose, uh, because this is the winner's bracket, and even if you uh, fall down to the loser's bracket, you can still win the tournament it's uh sort of like uh if you remember uh, when we were discussing the 1958 to 1959 uh u.s chess championship uh bobby fisher declined to play because he said that uh, he, he he didn't um, feel a single round robin was enough to actually see who who is the strongest he knew that he would win but he said that, okay maybe he can lose a game and then maybe someone could have a tournament of his life and all of a sudden uh you, you don't win and then you don't qualify for the interzonal and so on and and so on, which we all know how it ended. Uh, so uh, they didn't um, uh, want to introduce a, a, a double round robin system, and so Bobby didn't play. But here, uh, even if you lose one match, you can still bounce back uh, and win the entire event. So, uh, you know, it, it's not all, all lost if you lose one game. But okay, that being said, let's check it out. Magnus uh, uh, has uh, uh, 7 minutes and 58 seconds, and Artemiev the full 15 minutes. Let's see how it goes. Uh, Artemiev opens with e4. Uh, we have c5 by Magnus. He goes for the Sicilian defense, and now g3. Uh, the so Soko Steinitz attack, or sometimes called the Lasker Dune attack, uh, avoiding uh, pretty much all the main lines. Uh, he doesn't want the Magnus to have an easy way of uh, equalizing and, and just uh, getting a draw, even though this is basically equalizing right now. But, uh, you know, at, at least you're sure that Magnus can't force a draw here. So g6 by Magnus with bishop to g2 and now bishop to g7. We have knight to e2 and now knight to c6. So just nicely developing Magnus with full control over the d4 square we have castles and now pawn to d6 and here pawn to d3 so not having the open Sicilian uh, Artemiev wants to slow play this as much as possible uh, we have e5 by Magnus and now knight b to c3 we have knight g to e7 pawn to f4 now and Magnus castles we have bishop to e3 and now bishop to e6 so both players just nicely developing pieces we have queen to d2 now uh, preparing to uh, if if at some point the position opens up you can always trade off the dark square bishops and Magnus goes knight to d4 it's a beautiful square uh, for the knight and uh, Magnus uh, plans on keeping it there as long as possible so rook f2 Artemiev now wants to double up on the f file before deciding on whether to capture or push queen to d7 Magnus now saying that he's also ready to, to trade off the light square bishops with bishop to h3 and rook a to f1. So nicely doubling up, nothing out of the ordinary happening here. And the position has been reached before. Some known moves are pawn to f6, pawn to f5, rook a to c8, uh, uh, even, even king to h8. Uh, but here Magnus went for the immediate bishop to h3. And it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So Artemiev trades with bishop captures, queen captures, and now he plays f captures on e5. Now, why did he uh, trade, uh, trade off uh, so quickly? Well, he has a very concrete plan. Captures and bishop to g5. He wants to win the d5 square for his knight. And you know, uh, from experience when playing against the Sicilian, if you if you plant a knight on d5, you will have a great game. So here, rook a to e8, and Artemiev just trades uh, trades uh, bishop for knight. So rook, uh, bishop captures, rook captures, and knight to d5. And this is now a monster knight. 
uh, it's um, uh, very hard to get rid of it because it's on a light square. Magnus is a dark square bishop. So at some point, Magnus will have to remaneuver his knight uh, in order to maybe trade it for this knight. So he plays rook to d7 and now pawn to c3, uh, chasing away the knight. You could also consider just knight captures on d4 because then you know that your knight is staying on d5 forever. Uh, but you allow c captures on d4, then the c2 pawn becomes weak. Then uh, you know you you can uh, d double rooks on on the c file. Okay, you can't touch the c7 square, but you can put the rook on c6 and c8 and have uh, a very nasty pressure on that c2 pawn. So it, it would definitely be a trade-off. Uh, but uh, c3, Artemiev decides against this. Uh, knight to e6 and now king to h1. Uh, we have knight to c7 now, offering a trade of knights. And here, uh, Magnus should probably have just played c4. Uh, one thing it does, it prevents Artemiev from playing c4, uh, which really cements that knight on d5. And other thing, um, it's very, very, very unpleasant. Uh, how, if, For example, if you capture, there's queen g4, and now your e4 pawn is extremely weak. But okay, he went knight to c7, he offered to trade knights, and now just pawn to c4. Now, if Magnus trades, then Artemia would get a very, very strong pass. Pawn c captures on d5, and this would be uh, hard to deal with. So, queen back to e6, and now knight e to c3. We have pawn to f6 by Magnus, and now queen to e2. Uh, knight to a6 now, uh, we're trying to remaneuver the knight over to the d4 square. You want to go knight b8, knight to c6, and then knight to d4. We have a3, taking away the b4 square, but still knight to b8. Uh, we have queen to e3, putting pressure on the c5 pawn, and b6 by Magnus. We have pawn to b4. As soon as pawn to b4 becomes possible, you should always play it, and Artemiev knows this. So pawn to b4, captures, captures, and now knight to c6. Going after that d4 square, knight to e2, now Artemiev. Artemiev stops this, and now queen to d6, putting pressure on the uh, b4 pawn, so pawn to b5, and now knight to d8. Now the knight is being remaneuvered to e6, and then maybe later on to d4 or f4, maybe in some lines, maybe g5. Uh, all depends on what Artemiev comes up with. And he starts with h4. Now you can't just wait. It's a fine position. Yes, you have a uh, b pawn on b5, Magnus has a backwards pawn on a7, so this is all very nice for you, uh, but you also have to win the game, and uh, you know, uh, th there is no increment here, so if you if you get low on time, uh, it's not going to be easy. So knight to e6 by Magnus and pawn to h5 now. We have rook d to f7, Magnus doubles up on the f file, and now knight to g1. Uh, here h6 was uh, uh, definitely playable, and now if bishop uh, to h8, then g4 uh, stops pawn to f5 by black, uh, but uh, even though this is, uh, this is looking great, it's very hard to figure out how to actually break through here. So it's, uh, you know, uh, a fine position, but n maybe not playable in Armageddon. So knight to g1, Artemi wants to bring the knight closer to the black king. We have pawn to f5, as now I I he allowed it, he didn't play g4 h6 and now Magnus throws in f4 and this is now a problem for Artemiev. g captures on f4, bishop captures on h6, now pins the f pawn, queen to h3 and now bishop captures on f4. And it seems like uh, Magnus really stabilized this position, it's uh, very hard to see how Artemiev could even break through, uh, but it's Armageddon and Magnus is also getting very low on time. So here we have knight to f3, king to g7. Uh, we have rook to g2 and now knight to c5. Here Magnus had the very interesting move rook, bishop to c1 before playing knight to c1 and knight to c5. And now uh, it's very hard to see what do you do you actually play here. You don't you never allow this knight to take the bishop with tempo and you're going to play knight to c5 on the next move. Let's say you play rook to g1, still knight to c5. And you can never capture this because the uh, the knight on f3 would hang and now the d3 pawn is hanging and it's just not not very pleasant. Uh, so uh, definitely in the position, but Magnus went knight to c5 right away, and now comes knight to h4. Now the knight can come to f5 and could be a bit annoying uh, as the, the g pawn is pinned. So here queen to e6, not allowing this nasty pin to happen, and now rook to g4 as your queen is being threatened here. So rook to g4, and now Magnus has to figure out a way um, uh, how to play this. Now remember, the rook cannot move. Uh, so that's uh, that's a pretty big thing. But one thing you don't want to have is the pressure of this knight ever delivering a check. So you might as well just play king to g8, and then the game continues. If rook f to g1, you can even play bishop to g5, and you can never capture because just queen captures queen. So let's say knight to f5. Uh, now you just play rook captures on f5. E captures rook captures, and it's a very very tricky position. Uh, white maybe a slightly better, but nothing. Uh, 
uh, black can hold you, you can never capture on g5 because if you capture just rook captures and if queen captures on e6 with check knight recaptures and now of course if you capture the knight is defending the g5 pawn you do not want to play this end game so you're going to have to play some like rook a1 but still it's not not going to be much more than a draw however magnus didn't go for this and it's not the only move you can play some other moves like rook to f6 also a viable plan but magnus played knight captures on d3 and you know it seems like a reasonable idea because if you capture then queen captures on g4 but there is one very nasty idea that magnus missed in this position so feel free to pause the video and win the game for artemiev uh, while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this very nasty idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook captures on G6 with check. This is what Magnus missed. And it's sort of a, you know, call the police, but not for me moment. It seems like the Rook cannot move because the Queen hangs when in fact uh, that's not, uh, you know, the, the, the reality at all. Uh, so now if you capture back with the pawn, for example, then just Queen captures Queen and you've blundered the full Queen. So Magnus has to play Queen captures on G6. Now comes Knight captures on g6 h captures and now queen captures on d3 and if you count everything uh magnus now has a rook for a queen but okay uh, artemiev also getting very very low on clock and that black king, white king is stuck in the corner maybe it's possible for the rooks to somehow checkmate the white king and that's what magnus is going for rook to h8 check king to g1 and now rook to h5 we have knight captures on f4 uh vladislav just wants to eliminate as many attackers as possible uh, not uh, falling uh, for some sort of checkmate e captures on f4 and now queen to d4 check and this is a beautiful centralizing move by artemiev uh, as you'll see later on king h6 now pawn to e5 now artemiev is ready to start pushing his pawn to become a queen f3 by magnus we have e6 and now rook to g5 with check uh, the problem uh with a move like uh, uh like uh, rook to h7 for example is that the queen from d4 covers the g7 square and you will never be able to put the king on g7 in order to try some sort of a checkmate attack so instead magnus went rook to g5 with check king to h2 and now rook to g2 with check again this looks uh spectacular if you could just move the king you might even checkmate the white king but the queen covers that g7 square so that's not happening that's why the queen on d4 uh, is so uh, spectacularly placed so rook to g2 check by magnus king to h3 and now you really have nothing more to try uh, Magnus played uh, because rook captures on f3 is coming then the rook will hang so Magnus played rook to h7 it was his uh, uh, last attempt at saving the game if maybe somehow Artemiev doesn't play rook captures on f3 then it could be very tricky if, you, if, you, if you're allowed this check but of course Vladislav played it rook captures on f3 rook to g5 now by Magnus and just pawn to e7 this is again impossible it's just uh, you know I'm sure Magnus was furious at not being able to go king to g7 uh, rook captures on e7 but now uh, he gives up the h8 square so queen to h8 with check rook to h7 and now the king hunt begins a queen to f8 with check king to h5 and rook f4 threatening mate in one so rook to f5 you have to play this now rook h4 check king g5 queen to d8 check rook to f6 and now just rook captures on h7 uh, of course magnus can resign this but um i think uh artemiev had like 10 seconds on the clock and Magnus said also like 10 seconds on the clock so it's possible to flag your opponent uh you know not, not a very honorable way to uh, to win but um, no one has honor you know uh, on this level you want to win at any cost so king to f5 and now queen to d5 with check king to f4 and now rook to h4 with check we have king to e3 uh, rook to e4 with check king to f2 and now queen to d2 with check and it was in this position on move 60 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here it's a mate on the next move regardless of what you play let's say king to g1 and queen to g2 will be checkmate so uh, incredible stuff uh, uh like i said in the four games that they played of rapid chess uh only black won the game like uh four games zero <laughs> wins for white uh and then in the game where it mattered most uh, in armageddon uh, artemiev pulls off a win on demand against um none other than than Magnus Carlsen so he did get the black pieces but it cost him a lot of time and here it, it seems like it was uh, he 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 probably bid a bit too much uh, that, uh, you know giving giving your opponent twice the time uh and then allowing him to play such a such a slow position like this uh I mean e, e, e for c5 and then g3 uh, of course Artemia will not go into some <laughs> online and allow Magnus to get a playable end game you know with basically spending a couple of seconds on the clock 
uh, he really, um, uh, you know, made his uh, time work for him. So nicely done, Bartemiev. Magnus is out of the winner's bracket. He now goes into the loser's bracket. And now if he does really, really well there, he will be able to, you know, climb out w uh, back into the winner bracket and actually still win the event um, if he plays well. If not, you know, we we'll see what happens. So nicely done, Bartemiev. Um, I I'm, I'm going to check who he faces next. I don't want to trick you guys. Uh, let me just check real quickly. Uh, okay, so Artemiv will face Fabiano Coruana, who defeated Quang um, Liem Le, uh, and Nakamura will face Wesley So. Uh, Hikaru defeated uh, Vladimir Fedosev. They also went into Armageddon. Hikaru was able to get a draw with the black pieces, and Wesley just defeated um, uh, Levon Arunyan uh, without even going to Armageddon. It was two and a half, one and a half. Uh, so very, very nicely done by Wesley. Uh, so yeah, if you have a game that you really enjoyed, I haven't seen all of them, do use hashtag suggestion and I will go over it. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to uh, wish a very happy birthday to Baji and I would like to thank uh, Stefan Cornell, Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, Eric Holtman and Ivan Sterling for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.